publication that the state put out yesterday uh, related to the state's finances. Each year, the state, uh, the administration, issues two documents that, uh, that uh, uh, fiscal policy wonks uh, uh, sort of hang on, waiting for, and, and sort of um, uh, digest when, when they come out. They're, the, they're, they're called the revenue forecasts. One is published in the fall. The other is published in the spring. Typically, the fall revenue forecast is published in December um, and is used as the baseline for both the administration's proposed budget and for legislative action during the subsequent session. The spring forecast is smaller, is really just an update to the, small, to the fall forecast, and is used to fine-tune uh, what the, the legislative budget uh, at the end, toward the end of the regular session. That's, that's when we're in normal order. We've been in anything but normal order for the last couple of years, uh, but that's, that's the, the normal cycle. This year, the governor has called, as we all know, and we, and we started, yes, started Monday uh, into a, the fifth special session this year, uh, and this special session is devoted to two things, um, SB, 50, uh, SB or House Bill 54, uh, which is an amendment to SB 91, deals with criminal justice policy, and then the governor also has in this call uh, a new revenue uh, uh, proposal. Uh, his proposal is a payroll tax, a flat payroll tax, but uh, various legislators have talked about doing other things. In advance of this special session or, or, or to prepare for this special session to deal with the, the fiscal side of it, the proposed new revenues, the governor, the legislators asked for and the governor agreed to issue a preliminary fall 2017 forecast uh, in advance of the normal December uh, issuance of the fall forecast. And uh, the governor did that. They reserved the right to update it and change it uh, when they issue the formal fall forecast in December. Um, but, but this is what we've got now, and this is what's been provided to the legislature uh, going into this regular session as they start considering whether we need new revenue, uh, additional new revenue issue or proposals and, and what they should be. Interesting, you will see it when you read today's paper. Uh, the Alaska Dispatch News, I know, had an article on it. I think the Empire did, and I think the Fairbanks News Miner did as well. APRN has, done a, has, has got a segment on it. Alaska Public Radio Network has got a segment on it. Um, this fall forecast is interesting for a couple of reasons. What most of the media is picking up on immediately is the increase in production that this forecast is estimating for the next 10 years oil production uh, over what the, the administration had um, uh, uh, forecast uh, last year in both the fall and the spring forecast. The, last year, the administration was forecasting a significant decline in production from our current rate of around 500,000 barrels a day down to somewhere in the, in the mid 300,000 barrels a day. During the tenure during the tenure forecast period, uh, a lot of people complained about that, uh, suggested that was wrong. I was one of those, but there were there were numerous others that suggested the what they saw in what was going on in the North Slope uh, would result in much higher uh, uh, production levels than had been forecast. And of course, oil production relates to revenues because with uh, with royalties and with severance tax production tax. Um, uh, Oil production, oil production rates translate into, into revenue dollars. So the higher the, the production rate, the higher the revenue dollars, the lower the production rate, the lower the revenue dollars. And, and my complaint and others uh, last year was that we thought they were lowballing uh, the production rate, so they were lowballing the revenue forecast and showing a higher deficit uh, as a result of lowballing the production forecast. This uh, preliminary forecast comes out with a uh, a much higher production rate than last year, uh, and, and it shows a consequential bump uh, in revenues, about a half billion dollars, uh, $500 million in additional revenue beyond uh, what was really being forecast uh, uh, in the prior period. That's significant. Uh, there's, they've, they've done two adjustments. One is to increase the production rate, um, the production level, so that increases revenues They've, they've done a counter adjustment. Uh, they've reduced the forecast oil price. So when you reduce oil price, that, all, that reduces revenues. 
the net effect is an increase. The, 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 the increase in production rate overrides uh, the reduction in price and produces a net increase, but it's not as big an increase as it would be if they forecasted a higher oil price. Um, and as we dig into this in the coming coming days and coming weeks, uh, I, I think I'm going to have some comments about the oil prices they're using. Uh, they seem to be lower than what, what I think others have estimated out there. So we may have some, some additional discussion about needed adjustments on the revenue side as a result of, of oil price. One of the things that the media hasn't picked up on yet, though, that's, that is, is, is included briefly in the revenue forecast is what's going on with permanent fund earnings. As we get into this new fiscal climate, um, we're going to have, Alaska's going to have two major revenue streams. One's going to be the traditional revenue stream from oil, but we're going to have, we're going to be looking more and more to a revenue stream coming off of the permanent fund earnings. Regardless of how you believe we ought, we ought to land on the PFD, I believe we ought to keep the full PFD for reasons that we will no doubt talk about during this morning. Uh, but regardless of how you land on the PFD, we're going to be using some of the permanent fund earnings uh, going forward. Um, you, Governor Hammond originally envisioned uh, that we would split permanent fund earnings 50% to the permanent fund dividend, 50% to uh, use government uh, to, toward government when uh, oil was no longer sufficient to fund government. That's the point we've reached uh, now. Uh, and so that other 50% or some would propose more than 50 percent, will be, will be available to and should be used to help fund government going forward. So when we, when we look at these revenue forecasts going forward, we ought to be looking at two revenue streams. We ought to be looking at the oil revenue stream and paying attention to what the forecast is for the oil revenue stream. But equally as important, we ought to be looking at the permanent fund earnings stream and what that means for government going forward. And, and as important as the new information that we've got out of this forecast on the oil revenue side, there is some new information that, that at least I'm seeing for the first time uh, also on the permanent fund earnings side that I think is significant in terms of, of how we're looking at funding government uh, going forward. There's a line, if you, you can, uh, th- there are links to, the uh, to the forecast itself on the uh, tax division Department of Revenue website, State of Alaska Tax Division Part- Department of Revenue website. You can find the the forecast there, and on page two, which is really the summary page, you can find the estimated uh, permanent fund realized earnings, uh, the projection of that going forward for the next ten years, and they are significant. Uh, the uh, 2017 permanent fund revenue forecast was 3.2 billion. It leaps for FY 2018. FY 2018, it leaps to 4.4 billion, uh, and by the end of the 10-year period, FY 202017, it's 5.4 billion. That's a huge amount of money. It dwarfs, frankly, the estimates for uh, for oil. And if you, if you take that and, and sort of think about how that relates to the current debate about using the permanent fund dividend, the total revenue, according to the estimate, the total revenue appro- for available for appropriation uh, in FY 2018, including the realized earnings, is $6.9 billion. That's $1.2 billion over the total revenue projected for FY, uh, the historical revenue for FY 2017. $6.9 billion. If you back out uh, $1.5 billion, which it would be the full permanent fund dividend for FY 2018, if you back out the full permanent fund dividend, that still leaves you, leaves you $5.4 billion. Now, you have to make one other adjustment uh, to that, but the, but the, but the net net of that, of that number looks like uh, we could afford a full permanent fund dividend and still uh, fund the government. We'll be getting we'll be getting into this deeper in the in the subsequent segments, but I wanted to highlight that as something that is important to 
uh, understand uh, going Again, forward. People invite Brad me Keithley on these shows to talk about fiscal policy. So if you're still listening, and you and 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 I'm going to do a couple of things on fiscal policy to uh, uh, to sort of close us out here. One is go get your hands on the preliminary fall 2017 revenue forecast issued by the Department of Revenue yesterday. There were a couple of presentations uh, before the legislature on it yesterday. You can go find those on the akledge.com, the uh, the legislature's website. Look for meetings yesterday. Look for attachments, and you can find the slide decks they used. The big headline that people have focused on out of that presentation was uh, increase in oil production uh, far big increase over what they'd previously predicted in the in the spring last year's spring forecast and last year's fall fall forecast. That's offset some so an increase in revenue from coming from oil to the state. That's offset some by a reduction in the prices that they forecast. Um, I have some issue with that. I'll be developing that in subsequent uh, uh, pieces that I'll write. Uh, but but that's but but the big headline out of that is increase in oil. The hidden headline, the headline that I think, or the, the piece of it that people need to focus on, is the, uh, the, the projections of revenue coming off the permanent fund. Again, going back to Governor Hammond's original vision for the permanent fund, it was to develop, uh, as he put it, you know, turn oil wells into money, money wells uh, in terms of investing the permanent fund in, in things that would produce money, produce earnings, and then using those earnings 50% to go to fund the permanent fund dividend for Alaska citizens, 50% to government when uh, oil was no longer sufficient to fund government. That's the point we're at now. We're looking at that other, in my view, other 50% preserving the dividend, but using the other 50% for governor for government. Big numbers, big numbers uh, in, this, in this forecast for the earnings coming off the permanent fund. Even if you take out the permanent fund dividend and adjust for one other uh, thing that you need to adjust for when you do this sort of thing. The forecast for 2018 is showing $5 billion in, in revenue available for appropriation, even paying the full PFD, $5 billion in revenue available for appropriation. We've only got a budget of $5.4 billion. So that we're, we're pretty damn close without having to cut the dividend or go to other new revenue sources. That's the big headline that I think we're going to be seeing come out of that uh, earnings release or that uh, forecast uh, going forward. It's been an honor, a privilege, uh, and just plain fun. Yeah, it's been great having you here, and thank you once again for sitting in, Brad.